Hi there, friends. I'm Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowich. want to bring you up to date as to what we're seeing here as far as the tropical system is concerned. Of course, uh, Hurricane Debbie is now Tropical Storm Debbie uh, and is bringing a whole lot of rain, really extending from uh, really southeast North Carolina all the way south into northern Florida. You can certainly see the spin. Debbie is on land and therefore has weakened as it is indeed moving uh, a little bit further now to the east. Areas of most concern as far as who's going to see the jackpot totals really extending from near Wilmington, North Carolina, south towards Savannah in Georgia. You can see the heaviest rain right now out across southern Georgia and northern parts of Florida. All right, so here's the uh, information on Debbie as far as when and where it made landfall. It made landfall at about 7 a.m. Uh, near Steinhatchee, Florida. That's along the Big Bend area of Florida. Made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane. Uh, it did bring heavy Heavy rain and it did bring a whole lot of wind into uh, portions of Florida as well. It, it has just been um, a very uh, tough situation for our friends uh, in and around Tallahassee, south towards Tampa. Even Orlando has seen a lot of rain. This has been a uh, nasty storm for the peninsula of Florida. I want to talk to you about the steering outlook of this uh, tropical storm, and you'll notice that there's not one but rather two areas of high pressure. One called the Bermuda High because it's close to Bermuda. The other is a high pressure system situated over southern Missouri. These two areas of high pressure are blocking Debbie's forward progression. OK, so these two high pressures are kind of keeping and suppressing Debbie to the south for now. When these high pressure systems break down, or weaken, that's when we're going to start to see Debbie make a turn to the north. That is why there are so many question marks as to where Debbie goes once she stalls out near the coastline of South Carolina here over the course of the next 24 to 48 hours. The track is key to our forecast here over the next couple of days. And you'll notice here as we look at something called the spaghetti plots, this is every tropical model that is pretty much in existence. There's not a whole lot of agreement, okay? There are computer models that want to take this thing towards Virginia Beach. There are computer models which want to take this thing closer to Johnson City in Tennessee. Most of these computer models have it getting close to us eventually as a tropical depression or a remnant low. And you got to keep in mind that when we're looking at tropical systems, the east side of the storm is generally the worst side of the storm. So the further west this track goes, the bigger impact it's going to have for us. So if these computer models right here are indeed right, we're going to have a huge impact here in the form of uh, some wind, although the wind's probably not going to be that big of a deal. In the form of torrential rain, flooding would likely be an issue for us, and there could even be a couple of tornadoes if indeed these right here come to fruition. If these right here come to fruition, then we're on the west side of the storm. That means we certainly see rain out of it, but little wind and uh, certainly no severe weather. So there are question marks as to where this thing goes once it stalls out near the coastline of Charleston or Savannah. OK, so let's talk about the tropical alerts that are in effect right now. We do have tropical storm warnings really extending uh, from uh, Florida near the Big Bend area of Florida all the way north into areas north of Charleston towards the South Santee River. So we've got tropical storm warnings really for portions of Florida, Georgia and South Carolina. Over time, it wouldn't surprise me if these tropical storm warnings are extended a little bit further north to include Myrtle Beach and potentially even Wilmington in North Carolina. Here is the latest track we have for Tropical Storm Debbie. Okay, the latest advisory came out at 2 p.m., moving north northeast at 7 miles per hour, winds at 65 miles per hour. So again, this is indeed a tropical storm now, no longer a hurricane. Notice the path. We have a pretty good idea of where it's going through about Tuesday evening, if not Wednesday morning. OK, we think it's going to go through southern Georgia, potentially right over Savannah and then stall off the coastline of southern South Carolina, perhaps just offshore of Charleston. And from this point here, from 8 a.m. Wednesday, computer models are again all over the place as to where it goes. National Hurricane Center has this thing making another landfall near Myrtle Beach, going through Rockingham, North Carolina, and then heading northbound into areas, say, near Burlington and Durham in North Carolina, and then heading up towards Richmond. OK, look at the size of this cone of uncertainty. Has it going from far southwest Virginia 
to well offshore of North Carolina. So the cone of uncertainty is huge. Why? Because the National Hurricane Center is seeing those spaghetti plots just like I just showed you. Okay. The computer models are not in agreement as to where Debbie goes once it is offshore of South Carolina. Is it going to go uh, a little bit further west than this track? If it does, our impact here is huge. If it goes further east of this track towards Virginia Beach, our impact here is frankly pretty minimal. So that's why I urge you to stay tuned to your local weather authority here for the next um, really few days or so, because we will have a much better idea of where this is going once the turn to the north happens. OK, again, there are certain scenarios here. The most likely scenario is for this thing to kind of go right along the I-85 or I-95 corridor. And if that happens, yes, we have an impact here. Certainly a much larger impact to the east, a lower impact to the west. OK, that's the most likely scenario right now where the mountains see some rain, but not a huge amount, while areas southeast towards, say, Appomattox, Charlotte, Halifax counties could see anywhere from four to six inches of rain. There might be a chance for a, a spin up or two as well if it follows the track that we think it's going to follow. Again, further east than this track that you see right here, if it goes towards this side of the, the cone, our impact here is minimal. If it goes more towards this side of the cone or further west, then our impact here would be huge. Okay? Right now, it looks like, again, it's going to follow the path from the National Hurricane Center, kind of going right along the I 85 or I 95 corridor. And the impact here would be, there'd be some impact. Okay, the impacts would be larger towards the southeast, less towards the northwest. All right, let's talk about the setup really for the rest of today into this evening. Tropical moisture associated with uh, the tropical storm will certainly aid in heavy rainfall, really extending from Florida northbound into uh, southern North Carolina. And then Tuesday, the setup becomes even worse for the coastal Carolinas. The greatest chance for flooding will be on the north side of Tropical Storm Debbie come tomorrow, and that really extends from Brunswick, Georgia, north into Savannah, towards Hilton Head, Kiowa Island, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, and eventually northbound into Wilmington. This area in red could see anywhere from 10 to 20 inches plus of rain from the uh, remnants or from uh, Tropical Storm Debbie, because you've got to keep in mind, Debbie is on land right now. It's a tropical storm. Debbie will eventually get back over the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean before moving back on land as it starts its move to the north. So again, this is a storm system that could make potentially two landfalls. Made one in the Big Bend area of Florida earlier today, may make another one towards northern South Carolina here, uh, close to Myrtle Beach, maybe even North Myrtle Beach as we go into the latter part of this work week. All right, rainfall potential through Wednesday. And again, we talked about this a little bit. It bears repetition areas in red. That's where 10 to 20 inches plus of rain could lie. And again, that would be from uh, near Jacksonville in North Carolina. Uh, through Wilmington, through Lumberton, through Florence, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, areas near Orangeburg over towards Savannah, including areas around Hilton Head and also around Kiowa Island. This area is going to see, I think, the worst weather from Debbie because this is where Debbie could stall, perhaps right over Savannah or just offshore of Charleston. And as it does, it's just going to throw moisture on land into coastal sections of South Carolina and northern Georgia. So again, really from Myrtle Beach through Savannah, that's where we're going to see that uh, Jackpot total again 10 to 20 inches plus of rain. We here locally will likely see quite a bit of rain from Debbie as well. Again, the time frame for us would be probably Thursday, Friday into part of Saturday. OK, that's when our impacts would come. Our impacts would come when this thing makes that turn to the north. And as it does, it could be the type of thing where you see a quarter of an inch to an inch of rain towards the mountains while further east say towards South Boston, Charlotte Courthouse, Appomattox, you see anywhere from three to six inches of rain. OK, so uh, the thought process right now is that we're probably going to have a higher impact system east and a lower impact system to the west. OK, so again, you folks in South Boston, Charlotte Courthouse, Appomattox, even Lynchburg and Danville going to see more rain than, say, Withville, Pulaski, Independence and Blacksburg. All right, let's talk a little bit more about something we call precipitable water. This is just basically the amount of moisture readily accessible in our atmosphere. 
And look what happens as we head into Thursday and Friday. Look at this red. This red is an indicator of just a ton of moisture readily accessible in our atmosphere. So again, it is going to be oh so humid later this week. It's likely going to be wet for us later this week. The question is how much rain we're going to get. That is to be determined. OK, right now, if you had to know, I would say less than an inch west inches of rain further east. Uh, we're talking maybe two, four, three to six inches of rain, depending on the exact track uh, as you head, uh, especially uh, east of Highway 29. Okay, I think those are going to be the areas that are most impacted by the remnant moisture of Debbie. You'll notice, so again, this moisture is going to be impacting a lot of folks really from Florida all the way north into Maryland. So Debbie is going to inundate the East Coast with rain, wind, and potentially even a little more storm surge. And we'll continue to watch very closely for you the local impacts from this tropical system. As we talk about the weather this week, as we kind of put a bow here on this app cast, you need to know that the rest of today, quiet. Tonight, maybe a stray shower, otherwise pretty quiet. Tomorrow, maybe a slightly better chance for a couple of showers or thunder showers. But Tuesday, for the most part, is pretty quiet, too. Once we get into Wednesday, we're going to have a better chance for some hit or miss showers and thunderstorms could start to see that southern tip or the northern tip of uh, the remnant moisture from Debbie or at that point, potentially still tropical storm Debbie starting to impact our southernmost areas. That could happen as early as Wednesday, but also on Wednesday, we're going to have a front moving in from the north. So that front that impacts us here on Wednesday is moving in from the north. So I'm thinking on Wednesday, the best chance for rain and potentially some thunderstorms will be in areas along and north of 460 because still on Wednesday, I expect most of the rain from Debbie to be south of us. OK, so the rain we see on Wednesday primarily going to be in association with a front coming from the north. It's really Thursday into Friday, potentially even into Saturday, where we would have some local impacts from Debbie, depending on a how fast she moves and b the exact track she takes. Still questions loom as to how much she is going to impact us here at home. But with each day that passes and with each computer model that passes, it looks like her impact here is uh, a little higher than it looked two, three days ago. OK, we're hoping that she doesn't move any further to the west because the further she moves to the west, the higher impact she's going to have for us. The further she moves to the east, the less of an impact she's going to have for us. So please stay tuned to your local weather authority. We'll be back here at six o'clock after the Olympics and uh, go over in more detail uh, not only the tropics, but your local forecast here. Have a great day, everybody.